what we're going to use is we're going to use a combination of trig and Pythagorean theorem. So with number nine, we are given one side and one angle. So that means we've got to find the missing angle and the two missing sides. Now, which piece would be the easiest piece overall to find in this triangle? The angle. The angle, right? All we have to do is subtract it from 90. Now, why do I say subtract it from 90? Because that's all we've got left. If it's a right triangle, we know one of the angles is 90 degrees. So a triangle has 180 degrees. Well, we've already got 90 of it accounted for. So we only have 90 left for the other two angles. So if we take away the 28.6 from 90, we get that the angle A, we use capital letters for angles, is 61.4 degrees. Now we have to find the missing sides. So here's where you have a choice. You're going to have to pick a trig ratio um, once we identify which side we actually have. So we don't know the hypotenuse, we don't know the opposite, what we do know is the adjacent. So that means that I have uh, either cosine or tangent to choose from. Which would y'all rather use? <coughs> cosine or tangent? Cosine. Okay, so let's set up cosine. It really doesn't matter. You could just as easily do this problem with tangent. Okay? So the cosine of 28.6 degrees is equal to the adjacent 3 over the hypotenuse. I'm just going to leave it as H. Technically, let me look at the answer key really quickly and see how they have. No, they just have it labeled on the picture. So I was going to say um, sometimes. Uh, you will see it that the sides opposite of the angle uh, get a lowercase letter. So like the opposite is also side B and the hypotenuse would also be side C. They just use lowercase letters for the sides. And lucky for us, the adjacent is also side A. So that worked out. But anyways, I usually use the OA and H. But you may see on a problem somewhere where they use lowercase letters. That's how they do it, okay? Opposite the angles. Okay, back to solving this. This is the one where we divide. Our hypotenuse is going to be equal to 3 over the cosine of 28.6. Now, I highly recommend that when we have a quiz on this, that you write out that intermediate step so I know what you did, uh, so I know where your mistake is. Is it in the setup? Is it in the solving? What, where's, where's it going on? Or, you know, best case scenario, you don't make a mistake, but everybody's not perfect, right? Not even me. Okay, so that is 3.4 yards for the hypotenuse. Now, you have a choice. You do have a choice. At this point, uh, you could set up another trig ratio to find that third side. Or you can use Pythagorean theorem. Okay, it's up to you, whichever one you prefer. Uh, personally, I kind of think the trig ratios are quicker because there aren't as many steps in the trig ratios as there are in the Pythagor excuse me, Pythagorean theorem. Um, but you may be more comfortable with Pythagorean theorem. Okay, there's a you have a choice there. I'm going to show you both ways. So if we were doing Pythagorean theorem, we would have three squared. Plus, I am going to use the B here instead of an O because I don't want you to think that it's 0 squared. This is equal to 3.4 squared. So, for solving that, I'm just going to leave that number in my calculator. Squared minus 9. Take the square root. I'm just not showing all my work for all these steps, which I do not suggest for you. So, side B is approximately 1.6 yards. I could have also set up that other trig ratio. I could have set up tangent of my angle, 28.6, is equal to the opposite, which is side B, over the adjacent, which is 3. So 3 tangent of 28.6 should give me 1.6. 3 tangent 28.6. It does. Okay? So either way, you get the same conclusion for side B, which is Pythagorean theorem, 
plus is another trig ratio. Whatever you are most comfortable with. And I always do a quick check at the very end. I make sure that the smallest side is across from the smallest angle. Um, and then the other leg is across from the bigger of the two angles. And then the hypotenuse is, of course, the longest of the three. I always do that check before I move on. Okay, let's look at number 10. In this case, we are given two legs in none of the angles other than the right angle. So personally, I would start this problem using the Pythagorean theorem. I would go ahead and find that third leg. So I would go ahead and do 11 squared plus, let's see here, this would be side B. B squared is equal to 13 squared. So 13 squared minus 11 squared. And take the square root. Or actually, let's practice with simplifying our radicals. B squared is equal to 48. 48 is divisible by 16. So that's 4 square roots of 3. And I can confirm that. I can compare the decimal values there. Square root of 48 versus 4 square roots of 3. Yes, sir? Did you say, would we have to? Or, well, I'm just saying, the answers, I don't, I think all of these are rounds to the nearest 10. But, I mean, I've seen other problems where the answers are in radical form. So, in the worst case scenario, you just compare the decimals. But I just wanted to all practice the skill. Okay? Alright, so that is the missing leg. 4 square root of 3 meters. Or approximately 6.69. Yeah. Okay. Then we have a choice. Okay. Um, we can find either angle A or angle B. What do y'all prefer? Which one first? A or B? Okay. I like going in alphabetical order myself. Okay. So angle A is what we are going to identify these in reference to. 13 is, of course, always the hypotenuse. But if we start with A, that means 11 is the opposite, and B is the adjacent. Personally, I use the given information as much as possible. I'm going to try and avoid using what I found for side B, just in case I made a mistake in that. So that means that I'm going to use the 11 and 13, which is the opposite of the hypotenuse. That means I'm going to set up the sine of angle A, is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So I use the inverse sign. Okay, I'm trying, I know I'm talking a lot, but I'm trying to point out that there are several different ways that you can go about solving these triangles. It's not always the exact same way, the exact same steps every time, and you may solve it a different way than the person next to you but you still end up getting the same values. Okay, 57.8 degrees is our angle A, and then it's very easy. After this point, just subtract that from 90, and that will give you angle B. 32.2 degrees, and again, I do a quick check. Make sure that my smallest angle is across from the smallest leg, the other leg, and angle are bigger, and they are. And of course, the hypotenuse is the biggest. Okay, let's do a couple more just to make sure we've got this. Number 11, 69 degrees, there is angle B, and we're given 15 miles is side A. So, uh, if we find our angle there, that would be, what, 21 degrees for angle A when we subtract from 90. Okay, I'm going to start with my 69 degrees. I'm going to set up a trig ratio. Um, I have the adjacent side here, so I can either use cosine or tangent. We used 
cosine last time first, so let's use tangent. Tangent of 69 degrees. The opposite is what we're looking for. Side B is the opposite. And uh, the adjacent would be 15. So 15 tangent of 69 is equal to our side B. So side B is approximately 39.1 miles. And then since we're following the hypotenuse, let's just go ahead and do the third hand theorem. Square that plus 15 squared and take the square root. It's a little bit easier when you're finding the hypotenuse versus a leg. So that hypotenuse is 41.9 miles. It's the longest leg. The leg that we found was bigger than the one that was given because the angle opposite of it was bigger. Okay, one more where we're given two out of three legs. Again, I would, I'm sorry, yes? Yes, sorry. Do we want to start with trig or Pythagorean theorem? Let's start with Pythagorean theorem. Okay, um, so side A is the missing side. You want to go ahead and label your sides there inside the triangle. Um, side A is the missing side. So A squared plus B is 10 is equal to C, which is 12. So we've got 144 minus 100, so that's 44. Take the square root of both sides. Let's practice simplifying that radical. 44 is divisible by 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So that's equivalent to 2 square roots of 11. You can check it. 2 square roots of 11, the square root of 44, 6.6 6 both times. Okay. Now, it's probably more useful to write it as 6.6, 6, so you can compare values. But again, I just wanted to practice breaking down square roots. Okay, So 6.6 6 kilometers is our missing side. Now, I mentioned before, I would rather use the given information as opposed to what I just calculated. So I'm going to use the 10 and 12. How about we use, let's see here, we used sine the last time. Let's solve for angle A again. Okay, so angle A, 12 is of course always the hypotenuse, but if we're solving for angle A, 10 is the adjacent. So that's going to be a cosine. Ratio, the cosine of A is equal to the adjacent 10 over the hypotenuse 12. So that's inverse cosine of 10 over 12. Gives us approximately 33.6 degrees for angle A. And then all we have to do is subtract from 90 to get angle B, 56.4. Make sure everything agrees. Okay, biggest side or biggest leg across from the bigger of those two angles. The bigger leg was 10, so angle B should be the bigger angle. <coughs> 